It's God calling. He. It was so cool this morning. I was recording, and I had a chance to have the umbrella down so that it blocks the sun. And as I was sharing and oh, relating from daily light and the scriptures, and just a day that we all are involved in today. It was just beautiful to have the moment that, you know, you kind of, you feel like God's going to do something special and you, you sense it within your heart. You kind of hear it whispered in your ear. You kind of know in your being that there's something unique, something special, some little personal joy that God is going to give you in just a moment. So you anticipate, you have this hope, you have this longing you know, to feel or to see what it is that God might do. Even as we look forward to the days like that, like if you wake up with anticipation, then you have a joy in what God may do for you today. Well, as I was sharing the word and personal experiences in life and, you know, relating them and how God has talked to me or shared with me what he would have for me, the hummingbird that so frequently visits everywhere else. I mean, there's places down by the pool or by the, the apartment pool, but down by the plants that some that are growing, that uh, it goes and it's, it visits regularly. But occasionally, it's special times that God sends that hummingbird my way. And he comes up on the porch, you know, and he kind of checks out my plants, you know, that I have growing on the patio and it's always been such a unique time for God and I because, no, I don't say God is in the hummingbird, but God sends messengers to you at times that, should it fit the circumstances of your life, He can use it to inspire you in a way that causes you to turn your attention and your focus back onto Him in a special way. And so, there have been different times that God has used different things in order to inspire me and this summer has been a, a joy to be a friend so to speak to this hummingbird that keeps coming back that for me it's a it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit in a way you know that he is brought to me in a way to cause me to think for a moment to pause in my day to stop the work that I feel like I need to do to take a moment in time to expand the appreciation of my heart and soul to God himself and to thank him for giving me life, for giving me sustenance, for giving me an ability to recognize him in the little things he sends my way so that I would thank him for the greater things as well as the lesser, that they would be on an equal par for me as I enjoy Jesus every day. Because you see, it is the day the Lord has made, and He created you specially for today, and He created the day especially for you. Now, you can choose your way, or you can choose a more excellent way to go. One is easy, one not so much. <laughs> and then there's all kinds of other varieties that you could do, like what you have to do, or what you want to do, or what you don't think you want to do, or all the different ways that people play in their minds and the things that they think are most important in their life. But in trusting in the Lord with all our heart, in leaning not in our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct our path, He chooses for us to understand that in all things we can look for and see the hand of God working. Sometimes it's to move us in a direction. Sometimes it's to infuse us with His life and His Spirit. Sometimes it's to use us to touch another life. Sometimes it's a combination of all of these things, which is why we use that scripture that says, the Spirit gives gifts severally as He wills in the administration thereof according to His own will and how He determines what He wants to do, when He wants to do it, the way He wants to do it. And it's not really our choice, but it's His will that be done. So, for me, having that hummingbird visit today was just oh, awesome now for you it may take a massive you know service of 10,000 people you know to get the joy back 
maybe for you it takes a, a super special prayer meeting and you need to exercise your gift of tongues in order to feel the Holy Spirit, you know, giving you goosebumps, you know, and standing the hairs on your head. <laughs> or maybe you need to toss some gold dust in the air and pretend like it came from somewhere you don't know. Oh boy. <laughs> In whatever way that God is blessing you today, enjoy Him for Himself. Learn to seek Him and to see Him in the day that He has given you to live. For in God calling, thy touch has still its ancient power. Yes, when you are quiet before me, I lay my hand upon each head, and divine spirit, my Holy Spirit, flows through that healing, powerful touch into your very innermost being. Wait in silence before me to feel that. Wait, I say, on the Lord. When you look to me for guidance, my hand is laid upon your arm, a gentle touch to point the way, a word spoken in a still, soft, small way. When in mental, physical, or spiritual weakness you cry to me for healing, my touch brings strength and restoration as well as love. The renewal of your youth, the power to climb, the ability to see that in me my grace is sufficient for thee. So as I heal, so at times do I allow for my will to be done in your life, that you should hear, see, and know me, who is your healer. When you faint by the way, and stumbling footsteps show human strength is waning, my touch of the strong and helping hand supports you on your way. For oftentimes you do not see, as much as you've written the footprints in the sand, that it isn't only about what you can do, but what I can do with my hand. Yes, my children, my touch has still its ancient power, and that power is promised to you. So go forward into the future bravely and unafraid, for surely in life, and most assuredly in death, that if I am with you always, then the fear of dying and the fear of living are gone but rather the rejoicing in both is accomplished, for death is swallowed up in victory, and I have accomplished that which you could not do for yourself. For as I was resurrected from the dead, so too shall you be, from the dead works that you accomplished and you thought were so important, from the dead ideas that you thought were most important to be. They will be resurrected in the reality when you see me, knowing that I am your God and that as I live, so too shall you live, not because of what you have done, but because of what I have done in laying down my life for you. So inasmuch as Jesus has given us this life to see, to know, and to experience God in a personal way, should we not share that today with others? Could we not touch another person with the joy, <laughs> the expressed feeling of being that is so fulfilling that we can say whether in poverty or riches that we are most assuredly the richest of men because we can see God in us and we know God is in each of us and that we can bless one another with the love of God for as that is shed abroad in our hearts and as we are the light of the world so too people will be drawn just like that hummingbird to nectar and it will come hover and taste and see that the Lord is good. So, in your words and in your life, in your heart as well as in your deeds, in the works that you do today and in the things that you say, can someone come and taste and see that the Lord in you is good? I hope so. If not, it's a good day to turn it around back to Him and to maybe wait for a moment, maybe to be still, maybe to Put the umbrella up so the hummingbird can come in and taste and see that the Lord, oh, he is good. And he has provided for the hummingbird as much as he's provided for you and I. I thank God for you today. And I hope that today you will thank God for who you have in your life as you go your way with Jesus. Just trust him. You don't need to figure it out. You just need to trust him. Just like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says.